Hello everyone. I welcome you all to this virtual world of learning. Let's start your next chapter from your book Flamingo Deep Water which is written by William Orville Douglas. William Douglas who was born in Maine after graduating with a bachelor's of arts in English and economics he spent 2 years teaching high school in Yakima however he got tired of this and decided to pursue a legal career he met franklin d roosevelt at yale and became an advisor and friend to the president he retired in 1975 with a term lasting 36 years and remains the longest serving justice in the history of the court the following expert is taken The following expert is taken from of Men and Mountains by William O Douglas. It reveals how as a young boy William nearly drowned in a swimming pool. In this essay he talks about his fear of water and thereafter how he finally overcome it. Let's read and notice how the this autobiographical part of the selection is used to support his discussion of fear. The story deals with the theme which Douglas talks about his fear of water and how he finally overcomes it with strong will power courage hard work and firm determination once he took courage the fear vanished that shows most of our fears are baseless fear creates dangers where there is none the writer's experiences further confirm this proverb where there is a will there is a way let's start with the summary of this chapter deep water by william douglas the story begins with the narrator recounting an incident that took place when he was 10 or 11 years old he decided to learn swimming at the ymca pool in yakima He was initially worried when he stepped into the pool since it stirred unpleasant memories. When he was about 3 or 4 years old, his father had taken him to a beach in California. The waves had knocked him over and he had been covered by water. This experience had filled him with a deep fear of water. The narrator felt this fear resurfacing at the YMCA pool but over some days he overcame the fear by observing and imitating the actions of other boys who were swimming there one day the narrator was sitting alone by the side of the pool waiting for the others to turn up he did not have the confidence to enter the pool alone a huge boy of 18 came in picked him up and threw him into the deep end of the pool The narrator panicked as he sank into the bottom of the pool but he kept his wits about him. He decided to push himself up to the surface when his feet hit the bottom and then paddle to the edge of the pool. Unfortunately, he came up slowly. When he opened his eyes, he saw nothing but yellow water. He started to panic as he rose, especially when he could not get his face out of the water. As he sank slowly back down he started to lose his breath and was suddenly stiff with fear He reached the bottom and he jumped again coming up slowly He was overcome with terror again and froze He almost came up but again went back under darkness surrounded him as he gave up the struggle to survive exhausted death seemed to welcome him and he lost consciousness the next thing he knew he was lying beside the pool vomiting the water he had swallowed he had been pulled out of the water just in time this incident left him feeling vulnerable and helpless and from that day he was terrified of water as he grew older this fear stayed with him and ruined his fishing trips it prevented him from enjoying simple joys of life like canoeing boating and swimming 
Finally, he decided to learn swimming from an instructor. He started practicing five days a week at a pool. First, he swam repeatedly up and down a pool with a belt that was attached to an overhead rope that the instructor held. He panicked every time he went under water, but this subsided over three months. The instructor then taught him to breathe and kick properly, and eventually he learned to swim without help. The narrator was overjoyed, but wondered if he could swim alone without his instructor's support. He managed just fine. To curb his lingering doubts, he swam alone across Lake Wentworth and then across Warm Lake, which he had visited before. He did experience his old fear once in Lake Wentworth, but was able to ignore it. When he was able to swim across Warm Lake and back, he was ecstatic and had having conquered his fear. The narrator ends the story by quoting Roosevelt's word: "All we have to fear is fear itself." His near-death experience had only made him stronger, and finally felt liberated. Thank you.